Right, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Vault Live. Welcome, Vault Nation. We are so excited to have you guys with us wherever you are streaming from, whether you are on YouTube, any other social media platforms, whether you are at other campuses, Nigel, Josie, wherever you are, whether you are in the building, if you are in the building, give us a shout. <laughs> we're so excited to have you guys with us and we're really going to get into a great time of praise and worship with 3C Live and today we do have a, a guest speaker with us speaking to us about social media, the do's and don'ts, but we're going to have a countdown, countdown with us, Three, two, one.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Let's give a shout out to God because he has done it for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord Jesus where you are. Whether or not you're in the auditorium, whether or not you're online, praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are, Jesus. Give glory to the name of God. He is an awesome God. He is Jesus, our Lord. He is the Omega, the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to read from the book of Psalm 100. I'm going to read from the book of Psalm 107, verse 1 to 3. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God is good. And it continues. The promise of God, the truth of the word of the scripture, it continues. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks. Let's give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Then it continues. It continues. It says, For his mercy endures, endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Him, him who has redeemed for us from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands, and gathered, yes, gathered out of the lands from the east to the west, from the north to the south. So this scripture basically says, through everything that you're going through, whether or not it's threats of divorce within your family, whether or not it's mental illness, whether or not it's depression that you're facing, you are ending term one, but it was not a good term at all. Your marks didn't reflect what you put in. It says his mercy endures forever. God is good. And the Bible, you know that the Bible will never lie to you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So if the word of God says he is good, then through everything that you're going through, he will be good. He is good. He has been good yesterday. He is good right now. And he shall forever be good in your situation. No matter what you're going through. Your parents are fighting at home. There's stress of disunity, of divorce, of depression. Everything that is happening within your life. Maybe the walls are crumbling down on you. Your marks are not reflecting your work. You're putting in the work but not seeing the results. God is good. Again, I repeat, God is good. From the east to the west, from the north to the south, he shall forever be good. He was good 2,000 years ago, he's good today, and he shall forever be good within your life. But you need to believe it. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Meaning that through everything that is happening within your life, you need to say so. That you need to say, I will get a distinction even though I see a 60, a 50, a 40, a 30%. Declare it in your life. Say, there will shall not be divorce within my family starting today. Say, I will no longer be depressed. This situation, this burden, this problem right now within my life, it is gone in the name of Jesus. You need to declare it. For you to see it, you need to declare it. You need to say it. It takes a step of faith within your life. It takes a step of? 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 Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We're going to shout unto God right now. We're going to praise his name. We're going to say so. All the problems that we've been facing within our lives, they will leave because of the step of faith that we're going to take right now. As Christians, we're not going to come into the house of the Lord and believe lies. We're not going to come into the house of the Lord and believe the lies of the enemy. Amen. So wherever you are, in your seat, you need to believe God. Everything that you're facing, you need to believe who God is within your life. Stop listening to the voices of the enemy, the whispers of lies within your life. God knows the truth. God knows where you're supposed to be. Amen. From the east to the west to the north to the south, we're going to praise God right now. Amen. So don't be ashamed. Everyone around you, leave your friends. Leave your friends. Don't think about what you're going to eat after the service. Don't think about any of that. Don't think about whether or not you're going to school next week. Don't think about that. Think about what God is going to do within your life right now. Amen. So at a count of three, we're going to praise God. Leave your friends. You online, if you're at home, don't be distracted. Leave the people around you. You're going to praise God. It's you and God right now. Amen. All right. 
Okay. Three, two, one. Amen. It's a step of faith. It's a step of faith. It's a step of faith. No longer shall you be depressed. No longer shall you have suicidal thoughts. No longer shall you believe the lies of the enemy. You shall believe who God is with in your life right now. You shall believe the promises of God. Every footstep that you take will draw you closer to the plan and the purpose of God upon your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? What do you believe? No longer shall you be identified by your problems. No longer shall you be called the player in the high schools. There we go. There we go. You are not identified by how you look. You are not identified by your school results. You are not identified by your failures. You are not identified. You are not that boy who got 30%. You are not that boy who failed. You are not that girl who you are just not that girl. You're not that girl who failed. You're not the girl of the weaves. You're not that tall girl. You're not that short girl. You're not that fat boy. You're not that short boy. You're not identified by your problems. You're not that girl. You're not that boy. But you are the daughter and the son of God. How people look at you, how people name you, the names, everything that's happening. You're not that depressed girl who cuts herself. You're not that depressed boy who plays around in school. You're not the class clown. You're not the jokester. That is not who you are. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall believe it when? Today. You shall believe it when? Right now. Because let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Can I get a bigger name in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Amen. Everyone can take their seats. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Sia. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. How are you guys doing today? We can't hear you. How are you guys doing today? You all good? Okay, okay, guys. Right. Yes, so awesome ministry by Sia there. Awesome okay. worship by the team. But yes, guys, welcome to the service. Hi, guys. It's so good to have you guys. We are so excited to be here today. Lots lined up for us. That is including a game segment. We also have a social media segment coming up. How many of us here are on social media? I All know right. I am. All I right. Know I am. Yes, yes, we are. And so we're going to get a little bit of tips on how to handle social media, how to go about it as people who are believers in Christ. So that is really exciting. Then we also have Euphrasia preaching a little bit later. That's really great. Come on. Yes, sir. Okay, so we also have, I believe we're going to close off with the, with the band just jamming out a bit. And I just wanted to ask a question. I wanted to know the VVIPs today. Okay, who's here for the very first time? Just raise your hands, raise your hands. There you go, there you go. Clap for them. We see you, we see you guys. Welcome to the service, guys. We really enjoy you guys here. So next we're going to move on to the game segment, right? That's right, we are. But even before we get into that, we just want to remind everybody that we have live class once again, yes, right? Yes, yes. And live class takes place on Tuesdays at 6.30. So if you don't know what live class is, please hit up your leader and ask them what live class is about because you don't want to miss it, right? Yeah, you don't want to miss it. It's yes. too much. You empower. It empowers you. That's you know, right. I remember I was in the live class this week. It okay. really empowered me so yeah. much. Yeah. So yeah. Incredible stuff. Yes, yes. So you get into live class, but before we get into all of that we're going into our game, game segment. segment all right all right you guys bye right. thank you so much kg and loza come on guys give them a round of applause amen are you guys excited for our game today now this is one of my favorite games ever it's called two truths and one lie now i'm going to give you three facts thank you i'm going to give you three facts Two of them will be 100% true, but one of them will be a lie. And your job is to find out which one is the lie. We have some leaders here, they're good at identifying a lie, right? Some of us have tried to swing one by their way, they caught us quick. So let's see, I'm gonna start off with an example with my personal life. So you guys ready? So for me, Ngoi Tobajani, let's see. 
Number one, I cannot speak any vernacular. Vernacular. I cannot speak any vernacular. That's number one. Number two, I'm 24 years old. Okay? Number three, my ID name, my full name is actually Ngoi Jordan Tobajani. So my middle name is Jordan. Must I go over them again? Okay, number one, I cannot speak any vernac. Who thinks that's the lie? Okay, there you go. Oh, okay, there you go. Quite a lot of people, they say, ah, there's no way. Tobejan, no ways. Okay, good. You guys can put your hands down. Number two, who doesn't believe that I'm 24 years old? Okay, okay, quite a few people as well. And the last one, who doesn't believe my middle name is Jordan? Okay, a few hands there as well. So let's start off with number one. I cannot speak any vernac. Who said that's a lie? You guys are unfortunately wrong yes it is scary i can't speak any vernac i'm the most coconut person you'll ever see on the stage amen i can't speak any do me lang yeah i struggle i struggle amen so that's number one number two i'm 24 years old who said that's a lie i must be honest with you guys you guys are also wrong yes Shockingly enough, I don't know if you thought I was younger or older, I am actually 24 years old. Yes, yes I am. Oh, I'm young, a eh? small boy. Ntwana. The last one, my middle name is Jordan. That's the lie. I have no middle name. It's in Goetzo Bejani. You guys see how easy it is, right? Right. Now, I hope you guys also learned something for this, but I'm going to go through three facts about Earth. Are you guys ready? Number one, dentistry. That's dentists. Dentistry is the oldest profession in the world. That's number one. Number two, Coca-Cola, the drink, sells the most cold drinks in North Korea and Cuba. North Korea and Cuba are its most successful countries for sales. Number three, the entire Earth's population can fit inside of Los Angeles, shoulder to shoulder. The entire earth, seven point something billion, can all fit in Los Angeles, shoulder to shoulder. Let's go over them again. Number one, dentistry is the oldest profession in the world. Who says that's a lie? Okay, there you go, there you go. Coca-Cola sells the most Coke in North Korea and Cuba. Who says that's a lie? Okay, there you go. Number three, the world's, the entire world's population can fit inside of Los Angeles. Who says that's a lie? A lot more people. Right, let's start off with number one. Dentistry is the oldest profession in the world. That's 100% true. The oldest profession on earth is actually dentistry. Teeth existed since the beginning. <laughs> it really is a fact. Number two, Coca-Cola sells the most cold drink in North Korea and Cuba. That's actually a lie. That's actually the lie. Shockingly enough, the one that sounds the most true was actually the lie. Yes, unfortunately, the only place you can't find Coca-Cola is Cuba and North Korea at all. Google it, it's crazy. Which means, yes, the last one is true. You can fit the entire world's population in Los Angeles shoulder to shoulder. I hope you guys are learning something. Are you guys ready to get a bit closer to home? South Africa. Three facts about South Africa. Are you guys ready? Number one, number one, South Africa is one of the smallest producers of macadamia nuts in the world. Okay, number two, the first ever heart transplant was done in South Africa in Cape Town. The first ever heart transplant. Okay, number, th number next, <laughs> number three, the most luxurious trains the most luxurious train in the world is actually in South Africa. It's called the Rovos Rail. The most luxurious train in the world. Right? So number one, South Africa is one of the smallest producers of macadamia nuts. Who says that's a lie? Okay, there you go. That's nuts. Okay, number two. The first ever heart transplant ever on earth was done in Cape Town, South Africa. Who says that's a lie? Okay. Ooh, okay. Everybody says that's true. Okay, last one. 
the most luxurious train in the world is actually in South Africa. It is called the Rovos Rail. Who says that's a lie? Are you guys ready? Okay, let's see who's right and who's wrong. So, South Africa is one of the smallest producers of macadamia nuts in the world. If you said that's a lie, then congratulations, you're 100% wrong. That's crazy. Yes, let's give a hand for South Africa for actually being the world's largest producer of macadamia nuts in the world. Oh, yes. Oh, that's nuts. Oh, I'm going to go with those dad jokes. Number two. Yes, that means the first heart transplant was actually done in Cape Town, South Africa. Let's give South Africa a round of Come on. Let's be some proud for our country. The last one, the most luxurious train in the world is in South Africa. That is actually true. The world's most luxurious train is the Rovos Rail in South Africa. Want to give a hand for South Africa for that last one? That's how you play two truths and one lie. I want to do with the last minute and 30 seconds I have left a Bible edition, but I'm a bit scared. You guys want to do that? Okay. John was the only disciple that was with Jesus at the cross. Okay. Number two, it was Job that didn't want to go to Nineveh. And then he got swallowed by the whale. You guys remember that? It was Job. The book of... The book of, uh, oh, sorry, where am I? Oh, there you go, sorry. The book of Habakkuk is not in the New Testament, but actually the Old Testament. Should we go over those again? So John was the only disciple who was at the cross with Jesus. Who says that's a lie? Okay, someone says, some few people say that's a lie. Number, someone heard Tristan say it's true, and they're like, ah, okay, I believe, okay, no. Okay, number two. Job did not want to go and preach the gospel in Nineveh and therefore got swallowed by a whale. Who says that's a lie? Okay, there you go. Okay, there you go. And then the book of Habakkuk is not New Testament. It's actually Old Testament. Who says that's a lie? There you go, some hands there. So number one. <laughs> number one, yes. John was the only disciple with Jesus at the cross. Come on. There you go. If you said number one is true, so far you're in the lead. There's hope for you. Okay, you're in the right place if you didn't. It's fine. Number two, Job didn't want to go to Nineveh and then got swallowed by the whale and everything happened. He ended up in Nineveh. Anyway, that's a lie. That's a lie. It was Jonah that didn't want to go to Nineveh. There you go. A few people got that right. If you got that right, come on, give yourself a proud round of applause. You're a great disciple. And then the last one was... Habakkuk is not in the New Testament, it's the Old Testament. That is also true. There you go. That's how you pay two truths, one line. Now we're going to go over into our social media talks and we're going to show you a clip in three, two, one. Let's go. Hello everyone, my name is Garava Makopela. I am a student at the University of Pretoria and I'm here to talk to you guys today about social media. Listen, we can try and ignore it. However, we are living in a digital age where we have the entire world right at our fingertips. It sounds scary, I know, but it doesn't have to be. Especially because as children of God, we are given authority to dominate over creation and for creation not to dominate over us. And this includes our social media usage as well. So with social media, you can use it as a tool to impact nations. Listen, some people have never encountered Christ and they are looking at you to represent him. So this is the question that you should ask yourself. Am I using my platform to bring glory to the kingdom through what I post, the type of music that I listen to and the language that I use? You do not ever want to find yourself being a contributor to cyberbullying. And when using social media, remember this, do not compare your entire life to an Instagram highlight that is only 15 seconds long. This is actually the trick of the enemy to try and get you to think that you are not good enough. However, when you find your identity in Christ, you know that you have to love thy neighbor as much as you love thyself. Even the 10th commandment says, do not cover it over thy neighbor's goods. So focus on that and do not focus on the comparison trap. And there is power in community. That's why it's called social media. I mean, I met my cell leader through social media. So be intentional about the type of people that you follow. 
So in regards to the type of people that you follow, you need to ask yourself these questions. Do they speak life or do they speak death? Are they encouraging you to grow spiritually? On social media, you might think that this is not a big deal. However, do not be deceived. Bad company does indeed corrupt good character. So I hope this message actually encourages you to go back and to revisit your social media so that you can put it into good use. Thank you. Amen. Come on, let's give her a round of applause. That was great. I come back. There you go. We're not going to play another game. No, no, no. That's not why I'm back. I'm actually going to go through tithes and offering with you. And I just want to quickly share with you a few scriptures to empower you to be blessed. Amen. Who here wants to be blessed? Now, I'm going to give you a few tools and hopefully that helps today. So, Exodus 14 verse 16. Now, I want to first go over what this is about. So, it's about Moses. Now, you guys all know Moses. Um, he split the Red Sea, parted the Red Sea. Forgive my English. He parted the Red Sea, and he's, he set free an entire nation. Now, God promised him, I will set free the Israelites from the Egyptians who had enslaved them. But now he's in a bit of a tricky situation. Moses is now running with the Israelites away from the Egyptian PD, and he gets stopped by an ocean, by a sea. There's nowhere to go. You can run, but you can't hide. The Egyptians are busy singing. So the Egyptians are coming behind them to enslave them, to put them back in a life of struggle. So God, now Moses is saying, God, you promised us freedom, but how will we get our freedom? Give us instruction. Tell me what I must do. And then God gives him instruction completely opposite to how Moses pictured it. Completely opposite to how Moses pictured him getting his freedom. God says to him, pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea and the water will divide. Now I'm sure for Moses, he's like, God, what? This stick is going to make the ocean, what? And then God says, and the Israelites will walk through it on dry ground. This is the opposite of how Moses pictured his freedom. This is the opposite to how Moses thought the Israelites will be set free. And many times, we have a certain image, we have a certain picture of how God's going to bless us. We have our own certain, and then we struggle to do what God is asking us to do to receive that blessing because we've already envisioned it a specific way. You see, but here's the thing. When Moses was obedient, God delivered them from his oppressors. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to the Egyptians, they were the nation that was trying to enslave them. Now, I don't know, it might not be Egypt directly for you, but there are issues in your life that are trying to enslave you. There's a struggle that is chasing you down on a daily. And God wants your freedom more than you want your freedom. Amen? You see, now here's the thing with it. Here's where the problem comes in. Is many times God gives us instruction for our freedom, but it's not what we imagined. It's not at all what we pictured. We thought that God's going to bless us financially when we keep our money and save it, and that's the wisest way. But God says, no, give it away. Completely opposite way to our thinking. You see, now here's the thing. If Moses was not obedient, he would have stayed a slave. You see, there are some Christians, they're not because of their refusal to be obedient to God, they stay slaves financially. They stay slaves in their marriage. They stay slaves in their school to sin. You see, but God wants to set you free today, amen? But here's the thing. It is going to be opposite to your thinking. You see, many times God's thinking is completely different to our thinking, and that's why it requires faith. Say with me, faith. Amen? Here's what God's instruction is to us who he wants to set free. Malachi 3, verse 10 to 12. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. He says, if you do so, says the Lord of the heaven's armies, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test, God says. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from the insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. And then he says, then all the nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Amen? Now this is a promise from God, but remember that promise is only to those who obey the instruction. I want to encourage you today. Even though tithing might not be your normal way of thinking, even though it confronts your way of thinking, I want to encourage you. This is from the Bible. He says, says the Lord of heaven's armies. This is not from a church. 
I wanna encourage you, put your faith in God today and you're gonna see God give you breakthrough in ways you never expected. Amen? Amen. So if you want to give today, uh, if you look at the screen, you can point your phone. There's going to be a QR code to my right or to my left. Uh, or you can go to www.my3c.tv. You can click the donate button. And uh, if you are in, in house and you have cash, just please raise your hand. One of our ushers on the side will either bring you a card machine if you're fancy, or they'll bring you an envelope for you to put cash in. Amen. And I want you, I want to encourage you, trust God today and he will give you your freedom. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray over those who are making a decision today to tithe, and I want you to close your eyes, and we're going to say this prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your hand over us young people today. Thank you that, Lord God, even though it confronts our thinking, even though it's the opposite way that we were taught in how we obtain riches and blessing from God, but Lord, we make a decision today to neglect our beliefs, and we make a decision to believe in your word. We thank you that, Lord God, your word is true, and your word says that when we obey you, when we tithe and bring it to the storehouse, you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing, we will not have enough room to contain it. This is the promise to those who obey you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shouts, amen. Are you ready to give? Log on to my3c.tv for cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Choose your donation option. Enter your amount and press pay now. Choose one of our easy and convenient payment methods and you're good to go. You can give via credit or check card, instant EFT or the Masterpass option. My3c.tv cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Fix your eyes on the screen for the QR code. This is the inheritance the Bible says in the book of Psalms. Ask of me and I will give nations to you. And it starts with 12. If you want to end with a nation, you better start with 12. But you cannot have 12 if you haven't made a covenant exchange. If the covenant of fathering and mothering and discipleship is not holy to you. We can never multiply in our own human strength. It's not possible. While you can do it in your strength, it's still not God, it's still you. At a point where you can no longer do it and you hand over to God, that's when multiplication begins and it explodes 
because it's no longer your effort. It's God at work. You are anointed to multiply, but you will only start multiplying when you start opening up your mouth, when you start overcoming your fear, when you step into places where you might get nervous, you might feel scared, you might start shaking, but when you utter the name of Jesus Christ, the atmosphere changes, the things start moving, demons start fleeing. You will be blessed by God in every vision and dream that you have. Keep going. Keep believing. Don't let people talk you out of your dream, your vision. There are things ahead for you that God is going to do for you. Just keep believing, keep acting, keep loving, keep giving, and keep being a blessing to those that come in your path. It's the anointing that makes a difference in your life. It's the anointing that will make a difference in your family. It's the anointing that will make a difference in your marriage. It's the anointing that will make a difference with your children. It's the anointing that will make a difference in whatever career you might be about. But you must understand you are anointed to live. And because you're anointed to live, you are anointed to multiply. I, I believe that God is doing a new thing among us. We are busy changing the world. We are busy transforming Africa. Everything that you need will be given by God because He gave us a promise. I believe it. Jesus paid the price by His blood. He was able to bind the strong man. The death of Christ on the cross was the greatest defeat that the enemy had ever has ever suffered. Not only did He uh, overcome him, but He also overcame every demonic power that was working for Him. conference was awesome, right? Yes, you can give God a clap of hands. Hallelujah. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. How are you guys doing? Sure. So it's hi, but it's um, okay. Thanks. Are you guys hot? Okay. It's very hot, like a heater in here. But we're going to have an incredible time in the presence of the Lord. And before I get right into it, I want to honor my pastors, Pastor Bird, Pastor Shanae, and also Pastor Pearson, Pastor Blessing, for an opportunity to get to preach, to minister. And we're going to get ready. I love how they even played the Anointed to Multiply highlights from the conference, which was amazing. We had it about two weeks ago. It was really, really powerful. And we were tremendously blessed. So today I'm going to be sharing along the lines of anointed to multiply. Say with me, I am anointed to multiply. Say, I am anointed to multiply. Do this to your neighbor. Say, multiply. Do that. Actually, this is Wakanda forever. But multiply, okay? We are anointed to multiply. What does that mean exactly? And that's what I'm going to be speaking about with you guys. And we're going to dive into what you need to do to make sure that you are living in the multiplication of the Lord. And that as an individual, especially as young people, this may skip our minds that also with us, we have been given, right, the privilege. We are anointed to multiply. It's not exclusive to adults. It's not exclusive to all the people. Every single one of you in this room can receive the anointing to multiply, and you will indeed multiply, okay? So make sure that you are taking notes. Make sure that you're focused. Take notes on your phone, on your notebook. If you don't have a notebook, tend to your neighbor. Say, please, can I have a paper or a pen or whatever it might be? But let's take notes. Otherwise, you leave here not learning, not understanding standing, not applying, and then it is what it is, okay? We're not here from Groovo, we are here for Jesus, amen? amen? We're here for Jesus, and we're here to learn more about Jesus, okay? 
Before I get into it, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord of God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to get to be in your presence. Thank you for who you are in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we are designed and destined to multiply. We don't have to do it out of ourselves, Lord, but your word has already given us guidance. So I pray right now, Holy Spirit, even in the hearts of your young people, that you will strengthen them, that your fire will rest upon them right now, that we will get ready to multiply. We will get ready to go to another level. We will get ready to increase in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Awesome. We're going to get right into it. Oh, and hi, husband. Special hello to my husband over there, married to Tristan. Hello. Okay, so we're going to get right into the sermon, and I'm going to read to you guys the book of Matthew, chapter 28, um, to verse 30. Okay, so just right there where you are, open up the book of Matthew, chapter 11, sorry, chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, and it reads, come to me, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Somebody say learn. Learn Learn from me, right? For I am gentle and lowly in heart and, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Somebody say light. Alrighty. In the context of our scripture, you need to understand that when you do things God's way, it's easy. So if you are experiencing difficult, if you are experiencing hectic, I can't deal with it, I can't, you know, operate, I'm too overwhelmed, you're probably not serving God. You're probably serving something else. When we are serving and when we give to Jesus our everything, our all in all, then guess what? It is easy. It is light. Jesus says, you come to me right? But the problem is that even with the people that are in the church, they're not coming to Jesus. You guys are coming for some vibe, but you're not coming to Jesus. You guys are coming to groove, to jive, to have a good time, but you're not coming to Jesus. And you will come here, have a great time, yes, but you go out there and things are still difficult. That's a sign that you're not coming here for Jesus. You have other ulterior motives. Are you here to check out a boy? Are you here to check out a girl? Are you here to look nice? We are here to get to Jesus, right? Tell your neighbor, we're here for Jesus. We're here to follow Jesus. So come to Jesus and he will make it easy. He will make it light for you. If you serve him, even in everything that you do, did you even know that on an academic level, God can be involved? On an academic level, God can be involved. And I'm a testimony of that. I saw it in and through university. I never even thought I could graduate record time, but I did. I graduated record time and I knew it wasn't my strength because even though I tried, I pulled the all-nighters, I did A, B, and C or whatnot, only God could change my heart, could change my attitude so that I could actually excel. Come to Jesus. Come to, Jesus. come to, Jesus. come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. You feeling overwhelmed? Do you think you can't do it out of yourself? Exactly, you can't. So come to Jesus. On that note, I wanted to read to you guys the core of what I wanted to minister. And I feel like even with this verse, I've read it so many times, but just to try and understand it, was a little bit of a mission for me, but as Pastor Bert spoke about the scripture and I really went in depth with it, it helped me so much to understand that the more I do things God's way, the easier my life is gonna be. Because I've tried out of myself to say, ah, I know this one, I can pull it off. I know I have the ambition for this one. I know I have the strength for this one. This one, I can pull it off. Ha, huh. few months, few years, few hours sometimes down the line, it's like, what now? How did we get here? 
Because a man can make plans out of themselves, but at the end of the day, it is God who determines your footsteps. It is God who leads you to your destination. And if you guys don't get to God, then guess what? You're going to go to the wrong destination, which leads to sin. And what is sin? It is going to the wrong destination. It is missing the mark, right? It's like in soccer, which is the most confusing thing for me. When somebody has an opportunity to take a penalty and they go, and the ball goes that way. I'm like, the post is right in front of you, but the ball goes, wah. That's how many Christians look, literally. You try and shoot shots, but you're so inaccurate. Why? Because you're not doing it with God. You're not with God. And this is what we need, guys. This is what we need. If not for a pure and genuine relationship with God, we will not accomplish what we are meant to accomplish in this earth. You're not called to study and that's all. You will not accomplish the purpose of God if you focus your everything on studies. You will not accomplish what God has called you to do if you focus your everything on girls or focus your everything on boys. You need to go back to the creator. You need to go back to God. You put your focus on him. You seek first the kingdom of God, then guess what? All these other things will be added unto you because that is a primary focus. If you don't wanna miss anything in life, you don't wanna miss your shots that you are shooting, make sure that you are doing life with Jesus. And that's where you will find the grace of God to do what you were called to do. And so for every single one of us, it is God's anointing, it is God's blessing, it is God's desire that you multiply. And what does this mean? We need to multiply. It means that beyond your capacity, beyond your own personal life, you will make impact out there in the nations. And it has nothing to do with how good you speak, how great you look, how accurate you can be academically, or how cute you are. It has nothing to do with the external, but has everything to do with how God, your relationship with God is, with how your relationship with God is. It has everything to do with where you position yourself in the kingdom of God. See, from that place when you understand then that to multiply, I don't have to do it out of myself, but I have Jesus on my side that can help me, then guess what? It becomes a natural process. None of us have seen a tree going, mm, I'm about to pop some apples. Mm. We've never seen a tree do that, right? It naturally bears fruit. Sorry. Sorry. Excuse guys, I'm still recovering from a cold, so have patience on me. <coughs> okay, let's move on. And so we're going to look at ways in which every single one of us can become a people who multiply. We're going to look at ways on how we can become more accurate in our multiplication to make sure that we're not multiplying the wrong thing, to make sure that we're not multiplying ourselves, we're not multiplying our sinful nature, but in this earth we're here to multiply Jesus, we're here to multiply the gospel. We're here to multiply the things of God. We're here to multiply that which relates to the kingdom of God. And so it reads in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 15 to 16. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 to 16. It, it says here, see, I have set before you today, and which is every day, life and good, death and evil, 
right? Life and good, death and evil. In that, I command you today to choose what is life, to choose what is right. I command you to choose to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, that you may live and multiply, that you may live and that you may live and multiply. that you may live and multiply. Yo, Kunzema, guys. Tough times never last, only tough people. So I'll keep going. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> we'll keep going. Okay. He statutes, his judgments that you may live and multiply, right? And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go and possess, right? Somebody say, the Lord will bless me in the land which I go to possess. Awesome. So now that we know that these are certain things that we need to apply within our lives, right? First and foremost, we need to choose life. We need to choose Jesus. Secondly, we need to keep God's commandments. Thirdly, we need to keep his statutes. And then lastly, we need to keep his judgments. Okay. And I'm going to go through these different points. Woo, guys, sorry. <coughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry. <coughs> was a husband Tristan to the rescue Tristan to the rescue I just need a minute or so guys just to refresh Nate and I'll be back okay he's gonna take it's gonna take over for a second but I will be back soon amen I'm ready I'm ready I'm born ready it's fine. I'm even in my Sunday suits. I didn't get time to change for the vault. I look like a father, but I'm not a father. Amen. <laughs> how to multiply. Everybody say how to multiply. Number one, choose Jesus. Everybody say choose Jesus. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief doesn't come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy and he says, as I journey through life, I put all your statutes to music and they become a theme of my joyous songs. Hello. Who knows Superman? I know you guys just mentioned, mentioned him. Who knows that whenever these people rock up, there's a theme song. Ta -ta -ra -ta, ta -ta -ra -ta. And I mean, that meme is still going on today. Like that guy got married and everybody was saying, who did his wife get married to? I don't see anyone in the picture. When he's in interviews, they say, wow, didn't know that chairs could talk. Like shame, that guy's a living meme. And it goes on to say, come that they may have life. I have come that they may have life and life more abundantly. Oh, I read the wrong scripture. Sorry. Oh, it's half, the one's half pasted and the other one's half pasted. <laughs> But what is a statute? A statute is a law, a rule that we should abide to. It says, Lord, your statutes have become joyous themes within my life. Meaning that whenever you rock, the theme song that you should have should be a Christian song. But some of you, whenever you show up and you rock, it's booty, 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 booty everywhere. But you see, when you enter into an intimacy with the Lord, you're no longer able to be the booty queen. 
You're no longer able to be the pimp, the king that is rocking with all the Huns because Jesus and his statutes and the things that he has written become your joyous theme. Meaning what? You take delight in his statutes. Not just you do them, it's your joy, it's your pleasure. You see, there's too many young people today that find it as a bad thing to enjoy living for Jesus. They're more sad now that they're not addicted to pornography than they, when they were addicted to pornography. And I get so confused because it's a sin. There's too many young people that don't have that intimacy with Jesus and they lust after the things of the world. Oh man, I know I need to serve Jesus, but only if I could have become a rapper like Drake. Oh man, I know I have to serve Jesus and be a disciple, but only if I could just go work in the world and have all this money. You see, when you abide, John 10, 10, in the things of the Lord, that's when God blesses you with the abundance and disciples and fruit. The Bible says, when you abide in God and God abides in you, you will bear much fruit. John chapter 15, verse 10. Amen. That's my two cents. My wife wants to carry on. Amen. Number two. Sure, guys, we had to spice it up a little bit. <laughs> You've never seen this at the boat, right? Yeah. You've never seen this happen, yeah. ever. Yeah. Sorry, guys, but we keep moving. We will keep moving. Thank you, Tristan, for the two cents, adding on to the sermon, right? So as he said, John 10, 10, right? If you understand, because here's the thing, I realize that with many children of God, they don't perceive or have the full revelation of what it means by the fact that God wants to give you an abundant life. It's crazy how in our day and age, even amongst Christians, where people are struggling with mental health, people are struggling with suicidal thoughts, and I mean people that are literally seated in this building. We struggle with these specific thoughts even though we say that we are children of God or even though we say that we serve Jesus. And ultimately at the end of the day, and I'm so sorry, it all became super serious right now from Tristan's thing, right? But here's the thing, it's so real that if you don't understand that this is the enemy's job to steal, to kill, and to destroy, then you guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna become so fluctuated and so filled, right? With the revelation of what the devil wants instead of what God wants for your life. If you continue to live life on the basis that you are not living for Christ, or even though we are in the context of being a church and we hear the word, but at the end of the day, we don't do the word, then the Bible says you are like a fool. You are like a stupid. Turn to your friend and say, don't be stupid. Turn to your other friend, say, don't be stupid. You're like a stupid person, right? That misses life completely, misses the importance of having God, having Christ in your life completely. Because the last time I checked, where Jesus is, there isn't sadness. Where Jesus is, there isn't depression. Where Jesus is, there isn't heartbreak. Where Jesus is, there's a fulfillment, there's an abundance of life. This is what he says, I have called you. I have called you. This is why I come, not to steal, not to kill, not to burden you. So may we not be deceived as children of God and understand that Jesus says, if you come to me, I have called you to live an abundant life, to live life and life in the fullest. Please may we stop living lives that like depict a 15 second you know, video on Instagram and we think that is it and we think that is the life. And like Karabu said in her video, we base our life, we base our perceptions just off of somebody's 15 seconds fame on Instagram reels. And we think that is the life, that is how you ought to live, that is what a, what a, what a, what a, what a. You need to understand that the things of this earth are temporary. 
And the devil will do his best, his utmost best to put before you all these desires. It's the money, it's the car, it's the fame, it's the look cool, it's have this and have everything. He will put all these desires. Just for at the end of the day, once you indulge with them, it leads to destruction. It leads you straight to hell. Because if you don't understand who your God is in comparison to who the devil is, it's crazy how many children of God give the devil so much credit. We give him so much credit in our lives. We accept the fact that it's okay to just be sad. It's okay to just be depressed. It's okay to just keep on complaining. It's okay to just, it's not okay. Jesus wants to give you life and life in abundance. So stop settling for less. Stop settling for less. God has so much more in store for you. He has so much more in store for you. There is such a great adventure ahead of you. And for me, I realized when I was young, in between the ages of 16 and 21, I attempted to commit suicide four times. Four times. What must be going through a young person's mind to get rid of their lives? I haven't even touched 25. I haven't even touched 50. I haven't even touched, but four times within a span of 16 and 21. What must a young people really go through to take their lives away? See, if you don't take Jesus seriously, and that's where it began for me. With all the struggles and everything that I went through, I realized that if I don't begin to take Jesus seriously, the devil will get a hold on me and eventually I will, ex I will succeed in my attempts. You need to get to God, it's not a joke. You need to get to Jesus. You need to make him the foundation of your life in everything that you do. You need to get to God. I decided that, Lord, I'm going to radically chase after you because I see what the Word of God says, but it's not aligning to my life. And let me tell you something, young people, unless you choose to believe, unless you choose to have faith, unless you say, Jesus, come in, I repent and I turn away from my sin and I need you in my life, unless you get to that place where you humble yourself before God, you will never see breakthrough in your life. We're not here to play religion. You need to understand that life out there is hectic. It's tough. Your high school little drama. That has nothing in comparison to what you are actually going to face in the real world. <clears throat> and if you guys are not careful, if you guys are not careful, that you are paying so much attention to what's happening out there in the world, but you're not paying attention here, wanting to learn valuable lessons here, wanting to learn more about God here. Nobody else out there is gonna scream Jesus, Jesus in your face. Nobody else out there wants to give you hope. People are becoming pessimistic and negative and we need to be the light. We need to be the people that Jesus will use to bring the light in the darkness in what's happening out there in our schools with those who are suffering, suffering with illness, suffering with mental illness, suffering with the physical illness, whatever it might be, we need to be the light. We need to be the people who will be bold enough to say, I have faith in Jesus to radically change my school, to radically change my university, to radically change my family, to radically change me. Here I am. Here I am, guys, four years later, after all of those attempts, standing firmly in the will of God, being the light of God, ministering to you guys the gospel, the truth, because that's what Jesus can do in and through you. I'm a miracle. And I don't take credit for it. I know it's Jesus that worked in my life. And I'm here, expectant, ready, ready for God to use me. 
ready to multiply. Why? Because I've really determined for my life to be one that chases after him, not after the things of this world. The things of this world will come to an end at some point in time. But Jesus lives on. And so will my spirit live on with Christ. And that's what we need to focus on, our spiritual growth. And to multiply, that was the first point. We need to choose Jesus, yes? And ultimately, we need to follow his commandment. What does that mean? That speaks about your actions. It speaks about your behavior. It speaks about how you physically handle yourself. There's certain things that you do in life that then, that then determine you, what, the product of your relationship with God. How you become fruitful. How you as a person grow in your character. The more you follow his commands and obey his command, the more you will see the fruitfulness, the multiplication of God come to pass over your life. And I love how the book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 39 says that this is the ultimate commandment. Because listen, if you were to read the Bible, read the Old Testament and read the New Testament and try to keep up with every little thing that you have to do, it's going to be difficult. But if you just hold firm to these two, immediately, automatically, you fulfill the rest of the other laws. Because you cannot love and murder someone at the same time. Do you agree? You cannot love and then betray them and gossip against them. You cannot love and then backchat your, your teacher. You cannot love and then talk back to your mother. Here's the one and ultimate command, and it's actually two of them that are equal in weight, equal in yoke. And it reads here in, in verse 37, love the Lord your God with every passion of your heart, with all the energy of your being, with every thought that is within you. Love the Lord your God with everything, with your entire being, with every passion in your heart, with the energy, right, of your entire being, with every thought that is within you. Love the Lord your God. This is the great and supreme commandment. <coughs> it continues to say, and the second is like it in importance. You must love your friend in the same way that you love yourself. Many of us, we can embrace self-love. That's okay. In our day and age, I love myself. I'm too cute. I'm handsome. Look at my kicks. What, 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 But what, what does it look like then when it comes to loving others? When it, comes, when it comes to loving those that are around you? When it comes to loving your friend? When it comes to really laying down your life for other people? What does that look like? See, many of us, because we don't understand how much he loves us first, right? We struggle to love ourselves. And because we struggle to love ourselves, that translates then to our struggle to love other people. You need to get your relationship with God in check. You need to understand that if your entire being is not dedicated towards him, your energy, guys, your energy. Some of you are here during praise and worship on some. Seriously. Some of you during praise and worship, on your mind, your thoughts are on that girl. What's that girl worrying? What's that guy doing? What's wrong with that boy? Yo, I remember when my teacher did. Seriously. In the presence of God, our thoughts are filled with every other thing but God. Love the Lord your God with your everything. With your everything. That means when you worship him, you are clapping, you are dancing, you are praising him. He's on your mind. You understand that he is a true God, that he's a living God, that he is working in and through your life. Some of you, even as I'm preaching, look over there. They're chatting, talking to one another, not listening, not paying attention. And then you expect to get something out of the service. If you guys don't take this seriously and you don't actually dedicate your everything, your everything, 
Isn't this what this commandment says? Love God with your everything, your mind, your body, your heart, your soul, your everything. Then you will see the results over your life. You wonder why your life is a mess. You wonder why you wanted up in this place in the first time or whatever. You think somebody just invited you for the vibes. No. God brought you here for a reason because he needs to speak to you. Because you need to encounter him. Because you need to grow in revelation of him. This is a matter of life and death. Today he says, I put before you life and death. If you want to see life and life in abundance in your life, you want to walk in joy. You don't want to walk around with shame. You don't want to walk around with guilt. Choose him today. Choose to love him wholeheartedly because that will result in you being able to love others. The problem with the world today is that we misunderstand what love entails. Love is not a cozy emotion, a romantic emotion a cute little feeling. Love is your ability to lay down your life for someone. I love Tristan. Why? Not because he's my cute little husband. No. I love Tristan. I'm willing to lay down my life for him. Why? So that the promise of God can be fulfilled over his life. I love my disciples. Why? Not because I'm such a kind little leader and I love. No. Because the promise of God needs to be fulfilled over their lives. I love them. I need them to see the love of God reigning in and through me. Because that's what matters. That's what matters. And we mustn't play games, guys. We mustn't play games with the devil. Because as soon as he can distract you, as soon as he can turn you away from God, he knows that if you're not committed to God, you will never see breakthrough in your life. You will never see the day where you fulfill what God has called you to do in this earth. So don't give room. Don't give room. If we want to multiply, we need to walk in God's commandments and we need to obey them. The other thing was keep his statutes. What does that mean? Statutes are referred to legislative laws, right? that are in a country, that govern that country, that rule that country. In our day and age, we have the full understanding that we are in a democratic country and not every single law is based on the Bible. But if as children of God, we continue to just let that be and that's okay, let them do what they wanna do, we'll do what we wanna do, no, 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 no. We need to be a people who will even intercede. You need to understand that if your lifestyle is not governed by the word of God, your behaviors, your actions, your will is not governed by the will of God, then guess what? It will be governed by the will of this world. And the will of this world, it leads to death. It leads to people jumping off buildings. It leads to people betraying each other. It leads to people backstabbing one another. It leads to people gossiping. It leads to people breaking each other's hearts. It leads to people who are senseless in what they're doing. They're so short-sighted because everything for them is what's in this world. But this world will come to an end. Everything for them is money, money, money. But these things come to an end. There is only one who is eternal. Only one who is eternal. And that is God. That is God. And if you don't keep your lifestyle governed by the word of God, governed by the truth of God, then guess what? Guess what? It's going to lead you to being eternally separated from him. You can live life, not enjoyment, have a great time here on earth. But come the day that life is taken away from you, you are eternally separated from him. And that's not what we want. And then lastly, you need to learn to keep his judgment. What is his judgment? You believing that what he says is evil, it's evil. What he says is good, is good. We need to believe that. Because some of us are like, nah, but I can do church and then party at the same time. And I'm sure that's okay. Some of you are like, nah, but I can play around because I'm still young. Some of you are like, nah, but I can chat a little bit and gossip a little bit. Nobody's hearing us. 
Listen to me. If you don't trust God's judgment, because here's the thing, the more you judge other people, the more that turns back to you. It's like shooting a gun, but then it just... So trust in God's judgment. And young people, if you just do these simple things, you choose God, you follow His commandments, right? You follow His commandments, you keep His statutes, you keep His judgments, and you continue to trust in His judgments, you will see life and life in abundance flow through you. You will see multiplication. You will possess land. What does that mean? God will give you so much impact, so much influence. It's not this cute little thing where Julius Malema is trying to fight for land. It is the possession of the world. God giving you influence in the world, in countries beyond South Africa. Your children being blessed beyond you. But we have to trust God. We have to trust Him wholeheartedly. We have to give Him our everything. And this is what we're going to do right now. We're going to take some time to repent. We're going to take some time to get back to God. We're going to take some time to revisit where we are in our relationship with God. Do you truly love Him? Do you truly love God? And if you know you have missed the mark, you are that person that's been given how many penalties, but still your ball goes whoop. Right now, we're going to repent and we're going to choose to do this with God. We're going to choose life. And so right there where you are, won't you just close your eyes and begin to pray to him. Let this be a personal thing. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with your neighbor. Don't be distracted by them. But in this moment, we're going to pray to God. We're going to repent. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I have not been seeking you the way I should. I've been skipping my devotion. I've not been praying, not listening to my leader. Forgive me, Lord. In this moment, help me to love. Help me to love. Forgive me for my unbelief where I struggle to believe, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I need you. Come on, cry out to God. Cry out to him that he will help you. Cry out to him that he will change you today. Choose him where you have chosen death, where you are filled with suicidal thoughts, where you're struggling with mental illness. Bind it today in the name of Jesus and say, Lord, help me. Help me to love you with my everything. Help me to be consumed with you because if you are in my life, there is life in abundance. If you are in my life, I am sorted forever. If you are in my life, I am taken care of forever. If you are in my life eternally, I am taken care of. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. I need you in my life. I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. Help me, Lord, where I've struggled to obey you the way I should. Help me to continue, Lord, to lay down my life for you. To lay down my life for you as you have laid down your life for me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. I need you right now, God. I need you right now. I can't do it by myself. I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. And Heavenly Father, Lord of God, you see us right now at the point of our need, Lord. We're not here to play games, my God, but Holy Spirit, we pray that you will pour out your spirit on us right now, God. That we may be filled, Lord, with the revelation and knowledge of your will. Help us, Heavenly Father, Lord of God, to love you, to choose life, Lord, every single day. We don't want to be consumed by our troubles. We want to be consumed by your love, your peace, Lord, your abundance. We want to be consumed, oh heavenly Father, Lord of God, by your promises, Lord, which are yes and amen. We want to be consumed by all things that are good, Lord, all things that are pleasing, because we know that these come from you. You are a good God. And forgive us where we have doubted you, where we thought that you were the one that was causing pain. Forgive us, O Heavenly Father, Lord of God, where we have sinned against you. And help us right now, Lord. Help us to realize that you are with us. You are with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. And I want us to do one more thing. Won't you just quickly get up on your feet right before we do communion? 
Just get up on your feet. And we're going to pray today. We're going to pray today, right? I want to pray with those who know that their relationship with God is not where it's supposed to be. You know, right? Some of you are here and you think you're here by coincidence. No. God is calling you back today. I want to pray specifically for those who have never received Jesus in their lives. Some of you feel like, yeah, you've grown up in church, you've been a part of church here and there, but you don't know, you don't understand the fullness, the fullness of having Jesus Christ on your life, with you, doing life with you, helping you in everything that you do. I want to pray with those people who determine today that I want to do this thing with Jesus. I want to live life with Jesus. I want to walk with Jesus in everything that I, would, that I do. Those people who don't want to play games anymore. And so right there where you are, won't you just close your eyes because I need you guys to see spiritually that God is calling you. I don't want you to see physically. Close your eyes right there. See, God is calling you. God is calling you. God is calling you. Not me. God is calling you right now. He's saying, come back. I've waited for you too long. You've suffered too long in the hands of the enemy. But today, I want to bring life back. I want to bring relationship back. And so right there where you are, if you know that you need to get back to Jesus, won't you just slip your hand high? Say, here I am, Lord. See me, Lord. Here I am. I've gone way too far, but I need to come back. Won't you just slip your hand high with faith? Say, Lord, here I am. See me. I say yes to your call. I say yes to your call, Jesus. I see those hands, I see those hands. And I wanna do one more thing with you guys. If you raise your hand, quickly come to the front. I wanna pray with you. Quickly come to the front. Quickly come to the front. I'm gonna pray with you. Quickly come to the front. Come, 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 come. Come on, let's give them a hand. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. Come to the front. Quickly come, 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 come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen, and amen. If you know your friend next to you, just check with them. Do you need to go to the front? Do you need to go to the front? You better come to the front. We're going to pray with you so you can receive Jesus. Awesome, awesome. Just close your eyes and repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you that I'm reconnected, that I'm brought back into your kingdom. Forgive me, Jesus, We I've sinned against you. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. Wash me. Make me brand new. Make me brand new. Thank you, Lord that I no longer have to be separated from you. I am your child. I am your child. I am your child now and forever. Now and forever. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. You are getting Jesus. You are getting Jesus. You are getting Jesus. You got Jesus. You got Jesus. Hallelujah. Congratulations to you guys in the front, right? This is a big deal. And I need you guys to listen to me right now. This is a big deal. This is a big deal because now you begin to walk with Jesus. And you don't have to do it alone. Look at all those leaders that are on the side there. Just quickly wave. All these leaders that are on the side, we're going to do life with you. Everybody, some of the people that are in the church, we're going to do life with you because this is what matters, your relationship with Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Are we doing communion? No. We're not. 
Oh, no. thank you. Lol, where is he speaking from? No. We're not doing communion, okay? But congratulations to those who are in the front. To so these leaders that are on the side, just quickly follow them. They're going to connect with you guys, get to know more about you, get to hear from you, get to connect so that you guys can be a part of the Vault family. So just follow them. Just follow them there on the side. Church, give them a hand. Give them a hand. There we go. There we go. Just quickly follow them and they're going to lead you guys. Quickly follow them, okay? They're going to connect with you for a few seconds. And then you guys can join the service as soon as they're done. Amen. 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 Awesome. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, Lord of God, thank you for this time. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you are here with us. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, that you are gracious to us. I pray that even in this week that you will bless every single individual, Lord of God. Help them in everything that they do. Bless the work of their hands. And may they go out there and multiply and live an abundant life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen, amen. Man, we were so privileged to have had all of you with us here today, the Vault Live, and we want you to go and conquer in this week. Amen. Go and be radical for Jesus. So make sure that where you go, uh, 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 that you taking the word that you learned today you're teaching it to people what the lord has done for you share it with every single person you come in contact with so that the lord can do a work within their life amen so those of you online those of you in the building uh, we're so glad that you were able to join us and we know that the lord has just done a tremendous work within all of our lives but just there where you are won't you just raise your hands i'm gonna pray a blessing over you heavenly father we thank you that every single person that joined today is blessed with every spiritual blessing of god lord that you'll increase them lord in their coming in their going lord that they'll be blessed lord to a thousand generations and i thank you for that lord thank you that in this week the resources they need, you supply. The wisdom, the words they need, you supply, Lord, every single day. That you'll strengthen them, give them the desire to serve you, give them the strength to conquer everything that comes their way. And we thank you for this in your name, Jesus. That they are protected by you through this week. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, we're about to have the Vault Music Band. Take it away. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Same time, same place next week. Amen. Oh. Yeah. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hello, everybody! Hey, you guys good? Yo, 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 yo. For music in the building. What's up, what's up? Hi, are you guys good? Are you guys good? You good? You guys happy? I can't hear you guys. Are you happy? How was the word? Okay. okay. This guy gets it. Today we have um, quite like it's a challenge thing that's going on, you know, for like the vote music. Nindo, um, you can tell them. So we're gonna come up with a catchphrase from today's sermon, you know. And you guys, when you go to your schools during the week, you're gonna use this catchphrase to bring people to Jesus, to get them hyped, to come to the vault. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what kind of beats are we playing. We'll give you some like a bit of a teaser. You know? Come on, Kenya. Something boom bap. Something boom clap, you know? Something.